Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian at the Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California. We're covering the 2016 Reagan National Defense Forum. Our, sponsor, our coverage here is sponsored by Raytheon, and I'm honored to have with us Mike Petters, who is the president and CEO of Huntington Indles Industries, which I've noticed is in the shipbuilding business. And we do build ships from time to time. Yeah, we've, we've done a few of those in our day. Uh, or I should say, that, uh, from, from your standpoint, the nation's leading shipbuilder, builder of aircraft carriers, and obviously amphibious ships, and, and also surface combatants. Sir, um, you know, surprise outcome to the election, uh, and the Trump team has made shipbuilding a priority to increase the size of the fleet. Uh, you're, you're in that business. From your standpoint, um, you know, what are you hearing from the team about what they want to do, and what is the advice that you're giving them about managing what could be a shipbuilding upturn? Sure. Um, you know, I think w before the election, I could go back a couple of years, we actually were looking at uh, the Navy was going to need to recapitalize itself in some way. We didn't know what that looked like, but you could pick out all kinds of different uh, uh, scenarios, futures, and every one of those futures, in order for the Navy to be successful, we were going to have to be more efficient. And so we began investing in our business in a big way uh, about two years ago. Um, and we committed to a billion and a half dollars worth of capital investments to reset our shipbuilding business uh, for the future, looking at a number of different scenarios that could come forward. Um, what's interesting to me is that as we come through this election, we've kind of we've kind of moved onto a new page in the debate. I mean, the election actually clarified that uh, the American people want us to have a stronger defense posture. You know, and that takes lots of forms. But that but the discussion today at the forum has not been about do we need a stronger defense posture. All of the discussion has been we need one. How's the best way to get there? Um, and our view of that is that, and especially in the narrow area of, of shipbuilding, but I think it probably applies to um, the rest of the industry writ large, is that uh, uh, there's there's a lot of investment just waiting to make, waiting to be made to go support this. And and what we what we we've interacted with the transition team a couple of times on in industry groups, not as an individual company, but in industry groups, and that's kind of what we've been telling them, is that, is that uh, there are things that you can do right away uh, that will help the industry go forward and make the investments they need to make. First and foremost, we've got to get rid of sequestration. There's, you know, there, there, is no, there is no second page if you don't do that on the first page. Um, you do that, inside of the, inside of the shipbuilding account, We've been saying for a couple of years that you've got to be able to figure out how you're going to build the Ohio replacement program without wrecking the rest of the account. And if you can do those two things, and if, and if you can communicate how you plan to do those two things, what that's going to do is going to create confidence that these headline numbers, the 350 ship Navy, the larger Army, I mean, if you can communicate a little bit about how you're going to do those things, you'll create a lot of confidence that these other things that you want to do are actually going to happen, which will then attract the investment that you need to go make it happen. Do you think that there is the elasticity in the industrial base to do a surge in production the way that we've done in decades past? Oh yeah, I think there is. Certainly in my business there is. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of things you can do uh, to create more production for the sake of more production. You know, use multi-year contracts, build on hot production lines. Um, you know, in the Reagan buildup, if you look at the classes of ships that we built during the Reagan buildup, we were building classes of ships on hot production lines, and we just we just raised the level of building rate. You know, the, the aircraft carrier, the Emmett's-class carrier, was designed before Reagan. And what, what the Reagan administration did is they came forward and said they bought, let's buy two. You know, and they did it twice. They had two two-ship buys. And that was an understanding that we can ramp up, that we can commit to the industrial base so the industrial base can commit to the efficiency they need to make. And I think that, that, sort, of, that sort of example is true across all of the programs uh, that I'm familiar with. And I think that we're, we're poised for that today. Um, you know, some of the, in some ways, the Navy's already done a little bit of this, right? Um, in the AMFIB business, the decision to take the LPD hull form and use that as the baseline for the LXR, that, that greatly accelerates the opportunity to bring the LXR in and get it started. Um, and, you know, building the LPD-28, talking about an LPD-29 and these ships being transitions to the LXR, those are things that can help ramp production and, and surge the capacity if you want to do that. So.
Everybody's talking about uh, the need for attack submarines. Uh, full disclosure, I've editorialized about the need for more attack submarines, but if you ask Sean Stackley, you ask John Richardson, it's, it's not because John Richardson is a submariner, is the chief of naval operations, it's because the nation needs more nuclear attack submarines, and especially the trough that's coming in a, in a, mm -hmm. in a couple of years. Uh, but there is concern in the nuclear shipbuilding side of things, whether or not there is the capacity to go from two Virginias a year and one Ohio replacement to three Virginias a year and an Ohio replacement. Yeah, I don't. I mean, in my business, I don't, I'm not worried about that. I mean, if the 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 uh, and I I guess Safe Harbor. I was a submarine guy too. I know. I was going to give you a shout out on yeah. that. So, but I and I also think that history would say that whenever countries uh, can't buy the Navy they want, they build submarines instead because they're, they're so powerful and asymmetric and all that. So, so I absolutely agree 100% with Secretary Stackley and, and Admiral Richardson that this is something that no matter how many of these things we buy, we're going to want more. Um, my view of it is that we've ramped up to two per year. Uh, we can ramp up to whatever rate the country needs us to ramp up to faster than the country, than the country can appropriate the money to do it. So, you know, our ability to create workforce, our ability to create facilities, uh, we, you know, our, with our partner, we're very, very good at that. And, uh, and so as the process goes forward and you start to hear a discussion about, uh, well, maybe we'll do two per year in the Ohio class years, or maybe we'll go to three per year in, the, in all of those years, that's fine. Let's just, let's just begin that process. If you begin that process, we'll begin that process in the industry. In about 30 seconds, talk to us about the Camber deal. Services company closed yesterday, $380 million. What does it mean to you guys? Well, it's a, it's a transformative deal for us because we've had a lot of services businesses buried inside of our shipbuilding. We now have the critical mass to basically create a third business unit for, for Huntington Ingalls. It's about a billion dollar engineering services company, technical services business. Um, the style of competition in that business is similar and it's different than shipbuilding. So it, it allow us to manage that in a way with a lot more transparency and a lot more focus uh, than we've had with it in the past. And we're, and we're excited about it. Uh, we welcome Camber to the team and we look forward to working with everybody. Mike, thanks very much. Fairwinds following seas. Thanks, Vago. Good to see you again, man.